land of lakes and rivers, of great forests, blue skies and wide horizons. A powerful setting. Canada is the second largest country in the world. It extends north of the United States and reaches the Arctic Ocean. The soil is rich and the country has large areas of agricultural activity. Forestry and mining industries are supplied by various sources of energy. Ottawa is the capital city of Canada. The main industrial centres are located in the provinces of Ontario and Quebec. We will be stopping in the city of Quebec, capital of the province of Quebec. More than half a million people live here and most are French speaking. It is here in Quebec that our heroine was born, Dina Belanger, and this is her story. Dina was born on April 30th, 1897. Her parents were Octave Belanger and Seraphine Matte. Both were profoundly Christian. She was baptised the same day at St. Rock Church, receiving the names Marie Marguerite Dina Adelaide. Everyone called her Dina. She was an only daughter. A little brother was born soon after her, but he died at the age of three months. Her family was well off. She could have grown up spoiled and selfish, but her parents gave their daughter a fine education, where love and piety ruled the home. From a young age, Dina learned from her parents to share, to give, to think of others. Dina was headstrong, she was sensitive, reserved and intelligent. In many ways, she was like other children, with her faults and behaviour needing correction. On May 2nd, 1907, at the age of 10, as was the custom in those days, Dina made her first Holy Communion. She had prepared herself with care for this special day. In her autobiography, she wrote, During my first Communion retreat, I tried to recollect myself as much as I could. She then describes what this long-awaited day meant for her. I got up on the morning of May 2nd, thinking only about the moment when I would receive Jesus. I was not concerned with the exterior things. I kept thinking about the one who I was going to receive. My happiness was without bounds. Jesus would be mine and I would be his. This first intimate union left in me, among other graces, love for the Eucharist. My joy was celebrated by my parents, my family and many friends in a simple but intimate gathering at our house. All the religious events of her life were of the utmost importance to her and she kept them in her heart. Very early, Dina was advancing on her spiritual journey. This does not mean that she was already a saint. She was not born a saint, but she learned very quickly to let God have his way. She was not a child prodigy, but from a young age was very faithful to God's grace. God was molding her and she let herself be molded. When she was six years old, Dina began school with the sisters of the congregation of Notre Dame at the convent of St. Rock. She liked studying, applied herself diligently and easily obtained good results. When she was eight years old, she began piano lessons. She progressed rapidly and when she was 11, she passed her first diploma. Her sensitive nature enabled her to love music in a special way. From the outset, 
it seemed that Dina was leading the life of an ordinary child, obedient to her parents, cheerful with other children, working well at school. She did not attract attention in any way. In 1909, the Sisters of Notre Dame opened a convent school in the parish of Jacques Cartier. Dina was 12 years old. She left the school at St. Rock and attended the one closer to her house. A few years later, in 1911, she asked to go to boarding school. Her parents accepted and registered her at the convent school of Bellevue, directed by the same sisters. In her autobiography, she describes this difficult experience of leaving home for the first time. The first Sunday after I ended, I cried all day and I shed tears for many days following. In the end, my will was strengthened and I finally consoled myself. These years away from home were for me a great help in forming my character. I had been forced to go out of myself. On many occasions, I had been in situations where I had to struggle against selfishness and make an effort to do good. I returned home with more courage and strength. Jesus had been working within me through my educators, whom I remember with gratitude. She then spent two happy years at home, where she was successfully completed academic studies as well as piano. When she was 15 years old, with a group of her schoolmates, she visited for the first time the religious of Jesus and Mary in Syria. She had already experienced a desire for religious life. About this visit, she says, the sisters welcomed us kindly and we also met a group of students who were very friendly. I was far from thinking that the Lord might call me to this congregation. Her musical talent opened the road which led her to the Music Conservatory of New York. This was at the end of 1960. Her parents chose her residence our Lady of Peace boarding home, directed by the religious of Jesus and Mary. The peaceful atmosphere was favourable to serious work and to prayer. Dina progressed daily and was recognised as a brilliant pianist. She then began a series of concerts, during which she was warmly welcomed and applauded. She did not dwell on the praises received, but accepted them with simplicity. Exteriorly, nothing set her apart from her companions, but interiorly, from her childhood, she was in continual communication with the Lord. In her autobiography, she describes this state at different times. Our Lord communicated with me in a new light. It was the first time that I heard his voice so clearly, interiorly, of course, a sweet and melodious voice which filled me with happiness. This was March 25th, after her first Holy Communion. It was to be the start of an interior conversation that would continue throughout her life. Further on, she adds, he was the master and the artist of my soul. He taught me, enlightened me, moulded me. From the ages of 21 to 24, Dina received many graces from Jesus, who enlightened her and drew her to him. As soon as she felt an inspiration, which seemed to come from the Holy Spirit, she tried to answer with generosity. She wanted to be faithful in little things, to be attentive to the least details, not to refuse anything to the Lord, nor to offend him in any way, even in small faults. During the summer of 1920, 
she was more and more drawn towards religious life. The time had come for a decision, but in which congregation? One day she heard within her the Lord telling her, I want you at Jesus and Mary. Dina would become a religious of Jesus and Mary, a congregation founded by Claudine Thévenet in 1880. She entered the novitiate of Sillery on August the 11th, 1921, at the age of 24. She shares her intimate feelings of these moments. My parents accompanied me to the novitiate of Jesus and Mary. The Lord who had confided me to their care was now asking them to give me back to him. In my soul, it was night. As soon as I crossed the threshold, an interior strength made me say to myself, this is my home. It was a source of consolation for me. When she took the religious habit, Dina received a new name. From then on, she would be called Marie Saint Cecile of Rome. She made her first profession on August 15, 1923. That day, she told Jesus, I want to be a saint, and with your grace, I will become one. She gave herself completely to this task, letting the Holy Spirit work in her, and by simply living the present moment as best she could, she arrived at the summit. Her superiors sent her to the convent of Saint Michel, where she taught music. She had been there only five weeks when she contracted scarlet fever after taking care of a student who was ill. Her convalescence was long and the doctor discovered signs of tuberculosis. She was sent back to Sillery, where her activities were limited by recurring stays at the infirmary. The aim of the Congregation of the Religious of Jesus and Mary is to make Jesus and Mary known and loved through Christian education. Dina identified completely with this aim. Her poor health did not permit her to have an apostolic activity with the students, but she replaced this with unceasing prayer and she offered her suffering for all. Jesus continued to grant her exceptional graces, to which she responded with exemplary love and faithfulness. During her short life, she lived up to her motto with fervour, love and let Jesus and Mary have their way. The Blessed Virgin and the Eucharist were her guides on her path towards God. Her whole life was a faithful response to grace which demanded continual self-control. She was always joyful. She experienced the deep joy which comes from the desire to live each moment in union with God's will. She put everything into the Lord's hands and let him guide her life. Dina died after a long illness on September 4th, 1929 at three in the afternoon. She was 32 years of age and had been a sister for eight years. Thanks to the autobiography which her superiors had asked her to write, we know all that God did in her and communicated to her. On March 20th, 1993, Pope John Paul II declared Dina Blessed. What were the hallmarks of her journey? To be faithful. Faithful to God and to the Church. Faithful to the spirit of her congregation. Faithful to the personal mission that the Lord had confided to her. She let the Lord be master of her life. To love. She understood that God is love and she wanted to respond to this love. Never did she deliberately refuse anything to God. 
to welcome. Jesus taught her to welcome everything with a smile, in success and in failure, in health and in sickness, in physical or moral suffering. In our technical world, where efficiency has substituted values of interiority, Dina teaches us that real efficiency is to be found in God's action within us and through us. Her life is an uninterrupted act of thanksgiving, of praise to the continual action of God in the present moment. With her, we can say, Praise forever be Jesus and Mary. Gloria, Gloria. Thank you.